the OP1 8K. I've been using this mouse for the past five days and honestly, so far, I love it. Now, this isn't going to be a typical review where I talk about trivial things like the unboxing experience or go into too much detail about the hardware. Today, I wanna to dive into what really matters when you get a new mouse, which in my opinion is the weight, shape, size, and just how the mouse actually feels to aim with in a game. So I picked up the OP1 8K for around 110 Australian dollars, which is about 73 USD. So quite a reasonable price for a mouse these days. It is a wide mouse, and as the name suggests, it does boast an 8,000 Hertz polling rate. It weighs around 48 grams and is pretty small in size. I have some very large hands at around 23 centimeters in length, but I've always preferred small mice as I favor more of a fingertip grip when aiming. If you are someone who prefers something like a palm grip and you don't have really small hands, then the OP1 8K probably isn't for you. Now for the past two years, my main mouse has been the G Pro Superlite X, which as many of you will know, is a 60 gram wireless mouse with a 1000 Hertz polling rate. I had heard a lot of hype around the 8000 Hertz polling rates of these newer mice, and I was excited to see how it felt when I received my OP1. And honestly, one of the first things I noticed about the OP1 8K when I first aimed with it was just how responsive it felt. Now, I can't say if this was due to the 8K polling, the smaller size of the mouse, or the 12 gram drop in weight from what I was used to, but it was definitely a noticeable difference for me. On top of that, the clicks and scroll wheel also feel really crispy and responsive. I've been using this mouse on my Artisan Raiden Mid mouse pad, which is a quite a fast cloth mouse pad, and I swapped the stock feet when I received the mouse from the stock ones to the Tiger Ice Dots. I did briefly try the stock feet, and they felt completely fine, honestly, but for a long time, I've just preferred using the Tiger Ice Dots on every mouse I use. Now, given that I was switching from using a wireless mouse for the past two years and going back to a wired mouse, I thought that would annoy me a lot more than it has. But Endgame has implemented the wire extremely well on the OP1 8K. It sticks on an upwards angle out of the mouse, which helps significantly juice the wire drag. And as long as you have something like a mouse bungee to hold the wire in place, you'll have very minimal issues in this area. Another major difference I noticed between my old GPX and the OP1 was the finish of the mouse. The OP1 has a very dry and grippy texture in comparison to the GPX, which I really like. I often felt with the GPX, any moisture on my hands would make the mouse really slippery and my grip on the mouse would be much less consistent. I haven't had any problems like this with the OP1. Now for anyone who does have an issue with sweaty hands or whatever, um, grips can always help with that. And with the OP1 8K, you do get a set of grips that come with the mouse in the box. So that is nice as well. Now, as for the software for the mouse, you can download that from the Endgame Discord server. It has a very minimalistic and simple UI, which I really like. There's three tabs in here. You got your basic settings, advanced settings, and button mapping. In the basic settings, you have your DPI. You can set up four different DPI profiles and you can switch between them at any time with the button located underneath the mouse. The max DPI on the OP1 8K is 26,000. And there's some other settings in here you might like, such as angle snapping, which I know is quite popular amongst Valorant players. In the advanced tab, you can change your polling rate. You can switch between 1K, 2K, 4K, or 8K. There's a slam click feature here, which I have enabled. And this basically prevents accidental clicks when you pick your mouse up and maybe slam it down a little hard. And on the right here, I have GX speed mode activated for my left click. And basically what this does is it registers the input as soon as the switch actuates rather than when the switch is fully pushed down. Now this helps make your clicks feel even more responsive, especially when you're going for precise flicks that require very specific timing. In here, you also have a left-handed mode. I know there aren't a lot of left-handed aimers out there, but if you are someone who prefers to use your mouse with your left hand, that is always an option. And I think it's nice that they added that. So overall, I can honestly say that the OP1 8K is my favorite mouse I've ever used. There's nothing really bad I can say about it. Now, this isn't a sponsored video. I just wanted to try my hand in a new style of content. I own a lot of different mice and mouse pads and I kind of want to do more videos like this. So if you do want to see that, let me know. I might do a video comparing something like the Artisan Raiden Mid to the Artisan Raiden Extra Soft. So I know a lot of people get confused about the difference between the hardness of pads. So I can do a video talking about that type of thing. I have a lot of different mouse pads at different speeds. I've tried out a lot of different peripherals. So I think I can give a pretty good insight for people who are looking to buy these mouse pads that are pretty expensive and it can be hard to make a choice. So if you do want to see more stuff like that, keep an eye out. 
I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Cheers.